What is a social dilemma and how can we address it? In a social dilemma, our motivation to compete for our self-interests comes into conflict with our motivation to cooperate for the good of the group. If everyone makes the self-interested choice, everyone will suffer the worst outcome. In other words, what is good for one is bad for all. For instance, water rights. We want to be able to use as much fresh water as we want, but if everyone does this, we'll deplete the resource. How people respond to social dilemmas is influenced by a whole host of psychological factors, such as situational factors and group dynamics. We know that trust is essential to cooperation because it helps reduce people's fear of being exploited by the other group. Interestingly, groups tend to be more competitive than individuals in mixed motive situations, which we'll cover next. As we would expect, people who tend to be helpful and cooperative are less likely to compete than people who are more individualistic. Finally, there is little evidence of gender differences in cooperativeness or competitiveness in social dilemmas. In mixed motive situations, there are incentives to compete as well as incentives to cooperate. For example, the burning building or sinking ship scenario, where you're better off running for the exit, but if everyone chooses this option, more people will die. Or as a soldier at war, you're better off running for cover, but if everyone does this, more soldiers will perish. The prisoner's dilemma is an example of a mixed motive situation. It's a dilemma in which one party must either cooperate or compete with another party. Imagine two suspects who committed a crime together are arrested and interrogated. If both parties compete with one another and confess to the authorities, both lose and get five years. If both parties cooperate with one another and stay silent, both of them will get only one year. If one party competes and confesses while the other one cooperates and stays silent, the competitor walks free, while the one who cooperated gets 20 years. Essentially, the dilemma is that each person is better off competing and confessing, but if both people choose to do this, they're both worse off than if neither had confessed. A resource dilemma is a specific type of social dilemma. This occurs when two or more people must share a resource, but their self-interest conflicts with their desire to cooperate with the group. One example is the commons dilemma. If everyone takes from the commons area, water or oil, for instance, nothing remains for the group. Or the public goods dilemma. If no one contributes to the public goods, like taxes or blood donations for example, nothing exists for the group. Take a moment to read this cartoon as it illustrates the commons dilemma quite well. Social psychologists have identified some strategies we can use to address social dilemmas and mixed motive situations. 1. Build trust between groups. This can be done through cooperative activities. 2. Develop a sense of belonging between groups. 3. Identify similarities between groups, their shared identities and shared goals. 4. Discourage and punish competition. 5. Model selfless behavior so that members know what's expected. 6. Form small groups instead of large ones. Another strategy is to use graduated and reciprocated initiatives in tension reduction or GRIT for short. This is a tit-for-tat strategy, you respond in kind to the other group. If they cooperate, you cooperate. If they compete, you compete. And finally, when negotiating a deal between two groups, aim for an integrative agreement. Instead of splitting the pie, be creative and figure out a way to expand its size so that both parties get more than 50%. Imagine you're negotiating a deal between a home buyer and a seller. The seller wants more money and the buyer wants to pay less. Instead of splitting the difference, consider creative options, like the buyer waiving inspection contingencies and the seller covering some additional closing costs, to help move the deal forward. This can be especially helpful if the buyer plans to purchase the property regardless of the inspections and if the seller is willing to help the buyer. Integrative agreements find the perfect match between two parties. Other key elements of these agreements include communication, an understanding of the other party's perspective, and a recognition of a shared identity or shared goals. These features help both parties cooperate, instead of compete, to find a win-win solution. Congratulations on finishing yet another lecture in this course. The next set of videos is focused on attraction and relationships.